to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Um, just so happy to be here. We've had just perfect surf and it's late in the season. This is a recorded show. So it's late in the season here though for the whales. Uh, we thought they were all gone. And then yesterday at the end of a really busy, busy day uh, walking along the beach, I looked out and I saw a, a whale breaching and then waving goodbye with its big tail about two miles out to sea. And it was just so refreshing. They're leaving Waikiki. They're going, they're going north to Alaska, I guess. So just so beautiful here in Hawaii, uh, God's, God's paradise. And it's such a privilege to be here. I'm looking right down from my window, down on the Catholic Church, St. Augustine's. So if you guys are ever in, in, in Waikiki, you should go to our website, deepadventure.com, and contact me and say, hey, bro, we're going to Waikiki. Where do we get surf lessons? We'll help hook you guys up. But I was thinking this uh, the other day, I, I'm, I'm studying the life of St. Paul in a couple of weeks. We're going out to Greece to go into his footsteps and and really uh, get closer to him. And I've been studying the life of St. Paul exclusively now for almost a year. Um, and I also do this thing with the Sunrise Morning Show with Matt Swain once a week. And we were talking this last Monday about when Paul was on the ship sailing uh, from, he was going from Caesarea to Rome to be, to be, presented before the governor and now they're on a, they got on a second ship and they're leaving Cyprus and they're going to uh, try to hit, hit Italy and uh, they get to Crete and they land in a place called, um, oh, it's not new, it's Good Haven. And uh, it's, it's like a little bitty town and they go, we don't want a winter here. It's getting late, but let's scoot around the corner here and we'll go up to another place to spend the winter where there's better, uh, better, uh, you know, accommodations. And they go to make this little sale, and Paul says, it's not a good idea. Don't do it. It's going to be trouble. I've already been shipwrecked three times. Don't do this. They did it. A nor'easter came up immediately, and their plan to hug the coastline uh, resulted in them being driven for 14 days and nights across the open ocean, stormy seas, uh, never seen the stars, never seen the sun, don't know which direction they're even going. On um, the second day, they threw out all of the all of the cargo on the, the day after that, they threw out all the tackle except for a little bit of tackle to manage the ship. There's 276 souls on board. It's treacherous. I've been out in big surf. The biggest I've ever been out is like 45 feet. My son surfed 85 foot surf. When you're out in the open ocean like that, you get disoriented, you get lost, and it gets real sketchy. But Paul... Um, has a dream, has a, has a visitor. He has, a, he has an angel of the Lord come and say, God has granted you and all 276 souls and all those sailing with you. And so Paul knew everyone needed to stay on that ship. Um, after about 14 days, they began to run, they began to sense that they were getting closer to the land. And so the sailors were going to jump in a lifeboat and abandon ship. And, uh, and Paul saw that what was going on. He told the Roman centurion, don't let him do that. Because God has said, you know, everyone needs to stay on the ship if, we're, if they're going to be saved. And so uh, Paul, <clears throat> because of the influence of the Holy Spirit, became a leader, the leader, basically, the captain of the ship that he was a prisoner on. And uh, the, they brought those sailors back on, and then the, the ship gradually uh, hit, hit, beached itself, and the people were able to swim to shore. Ladies and gentlemen, the Catholic Church is that boat. We need, to, uh, we need to not abandon ship. It's not time to get in a lifeboat, try to do something different, or go to a different church. Right now, the church is in the midst of a storm. In the midst of a storm is where God teaches you peace. When Jesus wanted to teach his disciples peace, he was walking across the, the you know, he was in, the, in his boat, and they said, Lord, save us, we perish. And he, and he calmed the seas. In fact, he did it. The way the words he used were, almost, were more of a, 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 a a um, rebuke to the enemy. He said to the wind and waves, gag yourself. It was more than just be still. It was a stronger term than that. He rebuked the wind and the seas. Right now, the Catholic Church is going through a time of purging, a time of the Holy Spirit cleansing and purifying. Uh, the, it seems stormy. You seem lost. You may not feel like you know which way you're going. 
this isn't the time to, to panic and abandon ship and get in that little lifeboat and go to a non-denominational church or, or try to change the moral teaching of the Catholic Church. This is the time uh, to lay out the four anchors like Paul, and, Paul uh, did on that boat. As they approached land, they threw out the four anchors. And what are they? If you love the Catholic Catechism, and I teach from it every morning on my Facebook Live show, you know the four, the four pillars or the four anchors of the church. You know, the anchor around the year 350 was a major symbol of the Catholic Church. Um, the creed, the prayer, the sacraments, and the moral teaching, those are the four elements of the Catholic Catechism. Stay the course, ladies and gentlemen, stay the course. And what did Paul do that last night? No one had eaten anything for those 14 days. Maybe they nibbled here and there, but they just couldn't eat. It was, they just couldn't do it. It couldn't hold it down. They were all in such fear. Paul took bread and blessed it and ate it. Paul had a Eucharistic sacrament on that boat. It is only in this ship of the Catholic Church where you receive the sacrament the sacraments. Stay in the ship and let, let the Lord guide us through this, these times. And by the way, if you're in the ship, you're part of the solution. Um, fellow ship, right? Fellows in the same ship. It's your job to step up now for, the, for the, tr- the, the, the classic, the traditional, the real teaching of the Catholic Church. And we have people all over the world that are stepping up right now. I will serve. I will serve. I will serve. We have a privilege to have with us someone that I really respect and admire. His name is Robert Tunmeyer. He has been so successful in business. And one of the businesses that's the most difficult to do is in the franchise world. I used to audit uh, franchises when I was in a big four CPA firm. And uh, it's very, very, very sophisticated, the legal structures you have to, the compliance issues you have. But part of the people that really get involved in franchise, the people who lead those organizations, they're people that are dream makers. They see people with a dream to have their own business and help them to do that. And so we have Robert Tunmeyer. He's, uh, I believe the name of the, gr- the group you're with now is, it's, it's changed. It used to be the Dwyer Group, I believe, right? And now it's... Yes, it was Dwyer Group for a number of years. Now it's neighborly, effective last September. And the franchise that you uh, were really mostly involved with at the beginning, uh, that you're most known for is can you give us the name of that, that franchise? Franchise Rainbow International. Rainbow, Rainbow International. And um, so Robert uh, has that entrepreneurial instinct. And entrepreneurial instincts go really well with evangelization. They're almost the same uh, basic gifts. Robert, you, you uh, started your, uh, what, you started your, your, your franchise, uh, that, that desire to start your own business when you were in the 11th grade, right? That is correct, yes. Tell, tell, I, uh, give us a little scoop on that, just to give us a sense of how strange you are. Yeah, so I met the founder of the company. He started the company March 1975. I met him in June of 75 after my sophomore year of high school and uh, worked for him throughout that summer. And I realized well, I was not going to go to college. I wasn't cut out for college. So I was in a program when I started my junior year of high school called distributive education, which meant that I could go to school half day and work a half day and still get credit for high school. So I did that for about three weeks. And then I was sitting there in class and I realized I was making more money than the teachers. (laughs) And so I went to Dawn the founder of the company, I said, Don, I can't do this for two more years. I want to open up a franchise. And he looks at me and says, Robert, you just turned 17. The franchise agreement wouldn't even be binding. So I bugged him for another couple of weeks. And he finally said, look, I'll sell you Lubbock, Texas, which is about six hours from Waco. He says, I'll sell it to you for $8,000. Give me $2,000 down. You'll need a couple thousand more for equipment. So um, I went to my mom and dad and said, mom and dad, I want to quit high school, I need to borrow $4,000, and I want to move to Lubbock, Texas. And I got to tell you, my parents, they were incredible. Um, And I was not an ideal child, let me just say this. Hey, most entrepreneurial guys weren't, right? People, men and women weren't. And uh, so they- they, uh, You don't fit in the cookie cutter too well, do you? Yeah, no kidding. And so they uh, they said, look, Robert, this is the one chance we can give you. So they uh, went to the credit union, uh, put their car up as collateral, borrowed $4,000. Wow. 
Wow. Mom, mom went to school with me in October of 1975 and uh, said, I'm signing him out. Uh, he's done with high school. He's got a field trip to go on, a permanent yeah, one. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I left. I think the school was rather rather happy that I was leaving. Uh, and I loaded what I my equipment in my van and with $500 in my pocket and drove to Lubbock, Texas. Opened up my first franchise. Okay, we're talking with Robert Tunmeyer, who is an expert in, in the franchise business. He's also a biker. Uh, he's a part of the Bad Boy Club. Yes, he is. And, uh, and, and now he's very involved in men's ministry in Central Texas. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our incredible new website. If you need a website, you go to John Flynn at Kickstart. I think his name is, uh, it's Kickstarter Media, I think it is. But, or contact us. I'll put you in touch with John Flynn. We have a great new website. Go to it. And we're inviting everybody there to uh, become a Patreon member, help support our ministry. You know, uh, EW10 doesn't pay us for this show. Uh, they help us a little bit with our reality TV show, uh, but not even close to the budget that we need. And we rely on people like you to support us. So we'd love for you to go there, become a Patreon member. Everyone that becomes a Patreon member uh, this summer gets a, a copy of my latest book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. We'll be right back with more of The Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men to go to our website, deepadventure.com, and join Bear's Man Cave. Uh, we, ha we have a really cool private secret Facebook group. You cannot join by going to Facebook. you got to go to our website first. And then you get access to our secret Facebook group where there's uh, men there that, will, that challenge each other inspire each other, pray with each other, get real with each other through what we post um, on the site. But every two or three weeks, we have a video Zoom meetup uh, where we have a uh, you know, live interactive video conversation where we go through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And we model a small men's group right there on online. And then we help you, if you feel God's calling you to, and you know it probably is, to start a little uh, um, a man cave of your own with the other men in your life. So we invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. Come on, you guys. Join the man cave. We'd love to have you be a part of uh, what we're doing. We have as our guest today, Robert Tunmeyer. He stepped out of the box a long, long time ago. Uh, when he was in 11th grade, his parents loaned him the money to start a franchise. They believed in him so much, <clears throat> or else they just wanted to get rid of him so much because they knew he was going to be moving six hours away from where he was raised in Waco, Texas, to, uh, to uh, the famous ski area of Texas, Lubbock. <clears throat> it's famous. Um, you see ski posters of Lubbock, Texas. Have you seen that one, Robert, where, where – um, there's snow on the ground and the telephone poles kind of basically just yes. sticking out <laughs> flat as can be. Right. Yep. Hey, so I lived in Waco, Texas. You don't know that about me. I heard that about you. Oh, you heard vicious rumors. Yes. <laughs> and they were trying to get rid of me too out of that town. I was a surfer came into, into, into Texas from Santa Cruz, California at the end of my junior year in high school. At the height of the Beach Boy era, you know, when all of that music was so popular. And people there just, I mean, like, it, it was kind of, I, I'll tell you, it was le I was a legend because I was a surfer and I showed up in Waco, Texas. <laughs> I didn't know what a goat roper was. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, absolutely. And uh, I didn't know anything about the social etiquette because I was right when the hippie days were starting in Cali and and the, everyone was so proper and, and like... So you went from goat roper to the other end of the extreme with debutante balls and all of that. Now it's just a fish out of water. I went to Richfield, by the way. Where yep. did you go? Well, you know, <laughs> interesting, Bear, I was born in Southern California. Mm. I was raised in Southern California. My dad is Marine Corps for 20 years. Oh. So I never lived in Waco until I started my freshman year of high school. Did we went so through the same thing. I went for the, I, we went through the identical experience. So where were you in Southern California, down by Pendleton or where? Yeah, Camp Pillowton, Orange, uh, sorry, Ocean Side, Oceanside. Oceanside. Yes. Great surf, great. Did yeah. you were you young, old enough to start surfing yet, or not quite? Not really. No, uh -uh. I was in and out of California and North Carolina, actually. Well, I'm in touch with those people at Richfield High School again because of yeah. Facebook, and and you know it's it it's it's so cool because uh, I love I love them. 
Um, yeah. But I was such a different kind of a cat. And, you know, I still am surfing every day. And, and they're like, I guess he really did surf, you know. It's, but, um, but it was really ama- hard for me. I don't know if it was hard for you. When I left California, I brought three vials of sand with water in them, little, little <laughs> bottles. And I would dream about the ocean every night. Uh, it was and then until finally I, I, I went, I returned. Yeah. But um, so I went to Baylor. So I, I was exposed to the beautiful uh, Southern Baptists there. And there I went, I got to study scripture there and, and learned what it meant that there were um, uh, beautiful Christians that weren't necessarily in, in a full, uh, full relationship with the church. And, uh, and just, uh, and they prayed for me. Yes, very much so. And then when they prayed for me, I got totally converted through the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. And they're like, no, you went too far. Now we got to pray <laughs> the other way. But uh, so, so tell us, you, you have also have a history of uh, when did you start riding Harleys? I've been on bikes all my life and uh, bought my first Harley probably 35 years ago. And I've traveled what was it? Over. What was it? It was a uh, Sportster 1200. Yeah, the perfect bike to start on, right? Yes, exactly. And uh, I still have one today. Uh, and uh, what do you ride today? I ride a 2005 Road Glide. Oh, really? Those are that beautiful good, bikes. Custom built for for myself. My wife and I've traveled uh, all around the country on it. Quick little story. Our funniest Harley. You don't story. Have, it doesn't have to be quick. I want to hear it. Okay, so we went to uh, the 100th anniversary of Harley in Milwaukee. And so we, we shipped the bike to Minneapolis, went all around Lake Superior. Was this 2001? 2005. 2005 was, was their anniversary. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, some 2010 or something. Yeah, 2010, I think. And, no, uh, anyway. it, was, it was more like 2005. I'm pretty sure it was. Okay, early. something like anyway. that. Anyways. Yeah, okay. And uh, so it was – Sunday, been attending the rally for a couple of days, and we always go to mass no matter where we are in the world. And it was Sunday, so we hop on the bike, go downtown to the cathedral or basilica, I don't remember which one now, and we go in, and we got our Harley garb on, right? We got yeah, you're going to mass. Boot. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, we're going to mass. And so we sit toward the back. And this little old lady who is kind of the greeter type lady, and she, <laughs> she, she comes up to my wife and I says, hey, would you all carry the gifts up? And oh, my that's so like, cool. No, 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 oh, no, no. that's no, so no. cool. And, of course, I'm like, yeah, we'll do it, you know? Oh, that's so cool. And my so wife cool. looks at me, I'm going to kill you, you know? And uh, so time to carry the gifts up. And Kitty later says to Robert, that was the longest walk of my life. <laughs> And so we, we carry the gifts up and we turn around and there's a whole bunch of young people out there and they're just cracking up laughing. I yeah, mean, just, yeah. just having a ball, you know? Yeah. So we go on back to our seats and um, when we were leaving, my wife had has this little had this little angel on her vest. Yeah, and she pinned it on the uh, the little old lady there oh. on, on her blouse and oh my uh, left it with her. And it was just it was one of those really magical moments, really yeah, as as a whole. Just yeah, that's so cool, man. I, I that that museum in Milwaukee is amazing, isn't it? I, one of yes. my favorite things is that statue with the the biker. The bike is kind of. Arching up, I think, as I recall, or something. Yes. It's almost like a cowboy riding a bunk, bucking horse. You That's know what, what I mean? That's what it's like. So yeah. cool. And then you do, and you walk in and you see, like, what's the serial number on this bike? One. <laughs> yeah. <know>? Yes. <laughs> it's incredible facility. You know, we're going to be there this summer. We're riding. We're filming Rolling Thunder seasons five and six. We're going to roll up to Lansing, Michigan. And then do the UP. We're going to meet up with Knights on Bikes have their big rally there. I don't know if you remember. There's a thousand bikers showing up in Lansing. But before that, we're going to go to, uh, I don't know where it is, somewhere in Ohio with uh, the Catholic Cross Bears have their meetup three days earlier. So we're going to be filming with them. And then we're going to be filming with Knights on Bikes. I'm going to go to the UP and go all the way down and go to Milwaukee. And then we're going to head over to, uh, to, to, to Minneapolis. But yeah, I mean, tell me, what what, 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 what are you riding? I, I have two heritages, one in Hawaii and one in Florida, because we have a home in Florida, too. My wife's from there. Right. And a 2015 heritage. I, like, uh, I don't like the big lanyards and all that on the bike. I like to feel the road more. And Cindy and I, I, I bet your wife, is like, Kitty, is like this, too. When we have a choice of, we're going to go someplace, do we have to take the car? No. Okay, let's take the bike. Yes. Yep. And so, yep. but, but in Hawaii, we filmed here uh, uh, last uh, September, and... Uh, you know, in Hawaii, you don't get really long runs. 
You know, no, not, not at all. So I love having the bike. And I mean, sometimes it's having lived on the island, in the islands here for over twenty years. Um, when you're on the mainland, it's all of a sudden you feel like, hey, I could go anywhere I want right now. I could drive to Alaska if I wanted yeah. to, you know. And so uh, we just love riding, and it's so romantic. And my wife, uh, when she hears a Harley Harley engine, she's like one of those. People kid her. It's like she goes, squirrel, like a little hound dog looking. She just turns immediately to see who's riding by. So she loves. And, you know, we tandem surf, too, where I lift her when we surf. Wow. If you know Pretty that. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, so we do these kind of things together, and it's just so – it's a great – give me one minute about why that's so good for a marriage, that type yeah, of thing. So, yeah, here's what I would say. You, know, you we, We've taken several 4,500-mile trips together. And, uh, and that's good for a marriage? Yes, yes. <laughs> about you know, because about the second or third day out, you really your your head gets very clear. You get very yes. peaceful, and you stop where you want to stop. You see what you where you want to what you want to see. You experience you know the the smells, the temperature, and you you stop in these hole in the wall places and have meals together and just it just it, it just you connect in such a deep sense. Where, where's, uh, well, you're, you're one of those 4,500 mile rides. Give us the, the route. We only got 20 seconds, 10 seconds. Sure. We uh, shipped the bike to Seattle, Washington, uh, went up to Whistler, uh, BC. Oh. We went all the way across Canada to Saskatoon, the Canadian Harley rally. Then we dropped on down to, um, you got- oh, uh, um, the big one in, in, in Glacier. In, um, no, it was the uh, Harley Rally. Oh, the Sturgis. Yeah. Sturgis. Went on down the Sturgis all the way back to Waco. Okay, we're talking with Robert Tunmeyer. He's a bad boy. His, wa- his wife hasn't gotten over her bad boy stage yet. He's a biker. He's uh, an expert in entrepreneurship uh, franchises. And we're going to talk about his renewal and his faith and how he's reaching out to, to uh, evangelize men. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Do you know that my wife, Cindy, works so hard on our web store? She designs the shirts and the coffee mugs that we have, and my books are there, and we have um, really cool warrior rosaries. If you're watching us on our on our video cast on YouTube, we have the cool warrior rosaries. I'm holding up my paracord rosary. This is the, the one I hold on to all day long. But we have something really cool, and that is we have Bears Man Cave cigars. These are developed, designed uh, the Seven Virtue cigars. There's a sample pack of seven cigars, perfect gift for any man. And each cigar label, uh, you have to unpeel the label because it's so long. You have to unpeel it off in order to enjoy it. And inside that label, the label is a picture of one of the Renaissance paintings of the woman representing that particular uh, uh, virtue of, um, among the seven virtues. And inside the label is a quote from my book on that, that um, virtue. And so what happens is men talk about, what, talk about that, that, uh, that label, and it draws men into deep, deep, deep conversation. And it, it's really cool. It's been an evangelistic tool. It's amazing. Plus, you can buy a whole box of cigars if you want to, too. But go to our website, deepadventure.com. Go to our store. Buy our Long Ride Home coffee mugs, our Deep Adventure uh, mugs, our, our clothing. Our, we got all kinds of gear for you guys there. Go make my wife happy and go to our Deep Adventure store on the website, deepadventure.com. We've got our guest today, Robert Tunmeyer. He's a biker. He's a, he's an entrepreneurial man who I, I have so much respect for the excellence it takes in a human being to launch businesses and help other people launch theirs. And um, so we have Robert Tunmeyer with us. Aloha, Robert. Hey, how you doing? If I say sick and bears, you're not going to be... <laughs> you're not a Baylor fan and you live how many miles from, from the stadium? Actually, my office is about a mile. Ugh. And I'm, I'm not a un Baylor fan I'm just not a sports person well we were watching the Lady Bears this year man I did watch that game that last game was amazing when they won the national championship yes yes. yeah well listen I want to ask you about uh you know your walk with the Lord so you you know can I ask you a kind of a personal question you don't have ADD or ADHD do you 
Only a little bit. It's a theory of mine that entrepreneurial people, I tend to be an entrepreneurial person, right? Yeah. I help a lot of people start their businesses back in the day as a CPA. There's a little bit of that ADHD in a lot of entrepreneurial people because they kind of see things other people don't see. Yeah. I and they're ready to that. leap at that opportunity. Tell us, though, about the, your leap in faith. Uh, how did that sure. go? Sure. Yeah. So um, I lived the first 40 years of my life without any religion in my life at all. I uh, never went to church. I was never baptized. Um, didn't I didn't disbelieve in God. You know, I just didn't think it had any role in my life to speak of. And so what happened is I was about to fly to Vegas one Friday morning, had a speaking engagement out there. And it was about three in the morning. And I woke up and I was laying on my bo on my bo back and there's this bright light at the top of the ceiling and it had a figure in it. And all it said was Robert. And then my whole body shook violently. And uh, so I thought, hmm, wow, that's strange. So I flew on to Vegas and spoke. And uh, there's a magic shop in Caesars Forum Shopping Center there. Yeah. And I was going to stop in there and get some um, magic tricks for our uh, sons. And there's an art gallery next door where I bought some art before. And I stand there looking at this picture. And all of a sudden, this thought comes ripping into my mind. You can't spend that money. It's God's money. And Bear, I never had a thought like that before in my life. So I fly on back to Waco, go to my office on Sunday, and, I mean on Monday, and my assistant, Linda, who'd been with me for years, says, hey, Robert, I went to this church this weekend. It was really great. I really enjoyed it. You ought to look at going to church. And so I'm thinking to myself, in 72 hours, I've had these three very unique experiences. So... I decided, well, maybe I should go to a church. So I did. I went to church the following Sunday and uh, really enjoyed it. Was uh, it a non-denominational church? Or it was, it? Yeah, it was a non-denominational. It was a Fellowship Bible. Okay. And uh, what's really interesting about that, I was a single parent at the time, raising two sons. My wife, who lived in Fort Worth, uh, was raising two daughters my, who were married now. And uh, and uh, I, w I met her February 6th, which is like a week later. And that's a whole another part of becoming Catholic. And uh, so I went back to church the following week or so. And uh, there was a, a, a young preacher there. Uh, his name was Buck Rogers. This was his real, real name. And so he goes, look, you ought to come to the newcomers class. So Bear, I went to this newcomers class. It was before church. And I'll never forget being in that newcomers class. And it was like I walked into a dark room and someone turned on the light. Praise God. I mean, it was literally that that real. And Linda was in church that, that day. And I sat mm. down next to her. I, I says, Linda, I realized I lived the first 40 years of my life absolutely backwards. Mm -hmm. And um, Praise God. so, yeah. So I said to Buck after church, I says, Buck, what should I do next? And he goes, have you ever been baptized? I said, no. So I was actually baptized February 28th, 1999, 20 years ago. So that began my my journey with the Lord. He let me wander in the desert for 40 years. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and... Uh, how, did, well, how did that progress then to you becoming Catholic? Sure. So Kitty and I started dating, and uh, we ultimately got married in October 2000. And uh, she was a cradle Catholic. You're in trouble now. You're on the slippery <laughs> yeah. slope. And so we went to uh, a church I went to sometimes that we started going to a uh, Catholic church, St. Jerome's. Oh, I love St. Jerome. Yeah. And uh, the the men there were just so welcoming in the whole community. So we just started going to the Catholic church all the time. And uh, then I got involved with the men of St. Jerome's. I know we're coming up on a time break. So no, we got, no, we got, we got, we got five minutes. Go for it. Okay. Oh, or good. Four, okay. four minutes. Three minutes. Okay. Go for it. 
So I became part of the Men of St. Jerome's and I'd go to mass every week, you know, with, with, with our family and everything. And I'd take communion, never thought anything of it. In my own heart and mind, I thought if Christ was standing there, he wouldn't deny me communion. Right. Okay. And so the men of St. Jerome's wanted to have a camp out. I said, well, look, you can do it at our place. I said, we have 28 acres. Come out. And so we, this was June. We had a camp out and we're sitting around that evening, about 25, 30 men. And Father Don, the priest was there and he goes, Robert, tell us about your story. You know, let's, let's get to know you a little bit more. So I launch into my story and all of a sudden, Father Don and 30 guys realize I'm not Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was quite a quite an evening. And the next morning, did they uh, ex, did they ex, uh, do an exorcism right there? Or I'm just no, kidding. I'll tell you what, they were really they were incredible <laughs> men. But next morning, uh, a guy came up to me, Chuck Felderhoff, uh, uh, great Aloha, man. Chuck. Yes, and uh, he uh, said, Robert, he says, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure, Chuck. He goes, you know, have you ever thought about going to RCIA? I said. What is that, Chuck? And he goes, well, it's a class. It's how you become Catholic and all this. It lasts about, you know, eight months and one time a week. I said, wait, let me get this straight, Chuck. You want me to go to some class three hours, one evening a week for eight months? He goes, yeah. You'll, well, you'll wait a minute. Yeah, the other church, I just said I want to get baptized. I got baptized. It was <laughs> slam bang. It's like I closed that franchise deal right there, dude. Yeah. Now you yeah, want me to wait exactly. nine months? It's going to be the longest yeah. pipeline of this sale ever. Yes, exactly. And so I said, okay, I'll think about it, Chuck. And uh, then he said to me, he says, Robert, you really are not to accept communion. You really should stop doing that. And he went on to explain to me why. And you know, I said, okay, I'll think about that. And uh, so I talked to Kitty about it. And uh so I decided I was going to go go to RCIA. Okay, we so got to stop. We got to stop it right yeah. there. We got. We'll take a quick break and come back right now to find out how this this notorious uh, bad boy that Kitty's in love with, Robert Tunmire, uh, became Catholic. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Go to our website deepadventure.com to find out more about our ministry and how you can be a part of it. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You guys, I am so thankful for our sponsors. Um, Solidarity Health Share is an, a great company that, uh, based on Catholic moral teaching that's kind of like a, an insurance company. Members of my family actually are part of that. And we're so happy that they're helping us support our radio show. And so we well, tell you, go to our website, deepadventure.com. Down at the bottom, you'll see a link to go there. If you have a challenge with your health care or your health insurance, at least uh, go there and check them out. And Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Bettina Wolf over there at the credit union and, and uh, who helps me and, and, and the CEO, Tom Gripe, great people. They helped me uh, refinance a, a used car here and uh, we were refinancing our home and f like letters and emails and boom, they had it done. And so helpful and such a great platform to access your information. Go to our website. if You, you can... I'm in Hawaii, and they did a deal in Hawaii, and that is unheard of here to have a bank on the mainland help you on this island. So uh, just love Notre Dame Federal Credit Union so much. So go to our website, click on that link too, and and, and begin to support a Catholic uh, financial group, and they even have special investments for you that are based on Catholic teaching. We're talking with our good friend. Uh, I mean, this guy, Robert Tunmeyer, I, he, in a, I just admire people like this. My father, uh, Robert, was a— was was with Success Motivation Institute. Do you know those guys in Waco, Texas? Yeah, Paul Meyer. Paul Meyer. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I knew Paul, and that's where Don Dwyer, the founder of our company, that's where he got into franchising. I wonder if my dad probably knows him. My dad was a assistant superintendent of schools in Santa Cruz, and found a SMI Success Motivation Institute somehow, and and. Uh, and Paul Meyer met with him and says, so what is your goal? He goes, well, I'd love to take, be able to take my wife out to eat once a week. I mean, once a month. And 
maybe take a vacation. He goes, why don't you do that now? Well, I'm assistant superintendent of schools. It's a limited budget. I have four kids. He goes, he kept asking him why until finally he realized, my dad realized he didn't need to live inside that box anymore and he could step out and be bold. And he became vice president over there at SMI for a while before he went. He then uh, moved on to become a full-time professional speaker. Greg Wozniak is his name. And I yeah, remember Jim, it. do you remember Jim Serbascu? And, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Jim well. Uh, how was he actually, doing? Yes. I love uh, that guy. Jim, Jim passed away about oh, he passed four away. years ago. He was um, a great Bible teacher. Yeah. Ask, ask your uh, dad if he remembers Don Dwyer. I'm sure he I, – I know – I remember Don Dwyer now too. I think that name comes back to me late in the, in the, in the late 70s maybe or middle – No, he uh, left no. there in 1974. Okay. So I did know I – I know who Don was. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Or is Because I was there – I moved there in 71 and left in 75. Yes. Okay. Wow. Wow. So that's that's, so cool. that's interesting. But I but I have such a respect for not to do it arbitrarily, but to do it with prudence, which is the charioteer of the virtues. You know, you don't need prudence if you're going to sit on the couch and punch yeah. a clock. But if you're going to do something bold, you need prudence. And I just always admired uh, those those people that stepped out into that franchise world and said, we're going to do this, and then we're successful. And, and so I really truly mean when I see men like you that take the best practices they learned in business and are now applying it uh, to the new, new evangelization, it's, it's a very – my dad used to have uh, Eagles Rest Retreats at his home up in the Northwoods of Minnesota where they lived. Only presidents of companies would, would fly in. And he would just, uh, we, they would have a retreat. And Jim Sebastian actually came and spoke there once. Wow. So, and my, my dad's a deacon in the Catholic Church now. Okay, so fast forward. Uh, tell us about your conversion. And I want to talk about the Central Texas uh, Fellowship of Catholic Men. You've only got five minutes to get this all in, man. Sure. Well, let's, let's, let's race. So, uh, my wife and I go to the introductory class to RCIA. And uh, I had no intentions of becoming Catholic still. I, just, I was going to go to the class to learn. And so I go to the class, and I remember telling her on the way home, I said, Kitty, I don't think there's anyone in that class that really wants to be there. They're either married to a Catholic or they're getting married to a Catholic, but they really don't want to be going through that. I said, but I'm going to go, and I'm going to learn all I can learn. And Chuck, Hel Chuck Felderhoff was my sponsor also. I think – Thank God for him all the time. Thank God for the sponsors of our, for RCA people, yes. Yes, yes. And so I go through the class, and about midway through it, we play this video by Dr. Scott Hahn. Wow. I am Supper. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was literally, I, I got it. Here is the fullness of truth. Yeah, and you, you were receiving communion. You go, no, you can't do that. So this, this was kind of the linchpin for you. Yeah. And then it, there it was. Yeah, it's like, this is it. And uh, I really started studying the church fathers. I love to read. Oh, me too, so, man. The church fathers were everything. Oh, for me. yes. And uh, the richness I found there. Mm. And um, so shortly after becoming Catholic, I'll fast forward to the Central Texas Fellowship of Catholic Men. Uh, Bishop, uh, now Archbishop Amon out of New Orleans, called and his assistant called and said, hey, the bishop would like to have dinner with you. I said, sure. And so Kitty goes, Robert, why is the bishop calling you for dinner? I've been Catholic all my life. I've never got a call. I said, I don't know, Kitty. So we go down and have dinner with Bishop. You never had uh, a light shine with your name on it either like I did. So Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You never had an epiphany. Yeah. And uh, so we go down and have dinner. And being the person that I am, I have this whole outline of – what I right. experienced coming into the church and how there's, there's really no ministry to men in the Austin diocese. So really? I lay, I lay out this plan for Bishop Amon, and he says, go for it, Robert. Launch it. So June of 2006, we launched the Central Texas Fellowship of Catholic Men here in the uh, Austin diocese. Cent what, is the, what is the website? Central. It's called CentexCatholic.org. Centexcatholic.org, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, uh, you know, we launched it. We're coming up on our 11th annual men's mass in July. When do, have when do you have the conference? When do you have the conference? Uh, we have the we our conference is in February every, every year. We just had one. We just had our seventh one. Uh huh. St. Williams in Round Rock. And uh, we got our eighth one coming up this coming February. And, uh, and so, 
really have thrown myself into uh, Catholic men, ministry to men. Praise God. And so uh, awesome. The, the big movement going on is myself and some other men connected a year ago in Milwaukee, Kevin O'Brien and some other men, uh, Father Larry, Deacon Harold Brooks, Sivers, there's six of us, but 80 of us met in Milwaukee and we launched a Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. I want to be a part of it, dude. I mean, I, I met with I, uh, Matthew and yes. uh, Christoph and I, and I, but I, somehow I never made it on that loop. You guys have like monthly calls. I, I'm not on that email. I'm going to send you an email. There's one tonight at 8.30. Oh, oh that's awesome. 8.30, which would be Hawaii time. 8.30, what, Eastern? Eastern or? No, uh, yeah, uh, 8.30 Central. Oh, I'm going to be there. So so I'm so excited about that. And you, you know that I've gone to Matthew's website, and I one by one I'm picking all those men that he mentions there. And right. I say, I, I've been hosting them. I don't even know if he's aware of that, but I've probably had 20 of those guys on my show now because I really yeah, want to support what you're doing. Yeah, so you can go to catholicmenleaders.org. And our objective is to connect all the dots to ministry to, to men in our Catholic community in North America. Amen. You know, like there's this thing, Exodus 90, which is yes. really awesome. Very and I'm going, powerful. Look, I had that same vision, but I w didn't have the tools. It wasn't mine to do, but I had the same concept. I could just say, oh, you're doing that. I don't need to reinvent it. Let me take that and plug that into my ministry. Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we so much great stuff is done. We need to come together and. Exactly. And, uh, we got to bring it all together for our men. And we have, we're having our second meeting. It's in Fort Worth. What, what's, what are the dates? June 21st. It starts at 4 p.m. on Friday and ends at noon on Sunday. Okay. We'll be there for sure. Great. Awesome. Great, Barry. You're, yeah. It'd be great to have you there. Hey, I got a question for you, man. We got to wrap this up soon. But, um, uh, you know, we're filming our show. In Lansing, at the Knights on Bikes meetup, one thousand people. Why don't you come and be a be a cast member? Show up at our show up in Lansing, and ride Where's with they? us a little. I think we'll be in Lansing around the fifth or sixth of of. Uh, I think it starts on the fifth or sixth and goes for a few days, and then we're going to do the circuit, the UP, and then down to Milwaukee. But you should come and be a cast member. I'd love to have you on, actually be a, a, me a member of the cast. Yeah, let me let's hook up on some emails and let's see if we, what we can arrange. Yeah, that just sounds just so cool. Well, um, we got to go. Tell, tell us the website again. It's catholicmenleaders.org. Catholicmenleaders.org. Man, if you're listening to this and it intrigues you at all, it's probably the Holy Spirit. And you don't know how to do this. You see the need in your church. Father, we need to have a men's group. Well, yeah. if you have that sense, that means God's calling you to be the one to do it. And Robert and this group can help you launch that. It's not hard at all to start a men's group because the Holy Spirit gave you the idea. What makes Amen. you think it's your problem? He will bring the right talent and, and the right things together and work with you. Robert, I got to meet you, man. You're going to meet see. me. Okay. Um, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. Hey, subscribe to our emails. So many cool things happen when you do. But one of the things you get to do when you become a Patreon member is you get a, my free book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. But you also then get access to things like this radio show 10 weeks before it airs and you get the video version of it. You also get our episodes of Long Ride Home months before it's aired on EWTN. So go deepadventure.com and become part of the Ohana over there. Robert, God bless you. We'll God bless you, you, brother. Maybe we'll see you up in uh, Lansing on your Harley. Good likelihood. Okay. All right. Till next next week. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 